Here at Rocky's Venture Club, we encounter a lot of confusion over the difference between selling preferred equity versus convertible debt and have recently seen an upswing in the number of deals that are raising convertible debt to the point that over 50% of the deals that we do are through a debt investment vehicle. Before we dive into the differences between equity and convertible debt, let's first define each of these terms. Equity is fairly well understood and involves selling a certain percentage of the company for an amount of capital. This means that a company has to set a valuation that will determine the amount of a company that they sell when raising the capital that they need. For example, a company whose pre-money valuation is $3 million would sell 20% of their shares in order to raise a $750,000 round. The math works out that $750,000 is 20% of $3.75 million post money. Regular debt is easy to understand. For example, if you took out a loan of $100,000 at 8% interest, at the end of the year you will owe $108,000. Invertible debt is very much the same except that there may be one of three triggers during that time period which would lead to a conversion of the debt to equity. These triggers include the raise of a Series A or institutional investment, time-based trigger, usually 12 to 24 months, or liquidity event like an acquisition or IPO. Once one of these triggers is tripped, then that debt will be converted to equity at agreed upon terms. The typical term is there will be a 20% discount off of what the company has acquired or raises its next institutional round at. For example, if you invest $100,000 into a convertible note and a year later a VC invests in the company at a $5 million valuation, the 20% discount means that your $100,000 plus any accrued interest will be converted into equity based on a $4 million pre-money valuation. There are a few advantages to a convertible note, including the fact that the documentation is lighter and therefore slightly cheaper, and angel investors do receive interest on the debt, which is usually 5-8%. to 8%. Many entrepreneurs think that convertible debt is a way of avoiding valuation, so that valuation can later be determined by a venture capitalist. And this is not true. It is now highly unusual to raise convertible debt without a valuation, which takes the form of a valuation cap. Successful angel investors invest in companies that roughly double in value every year, giving them a 60% internal rate of return. This return is based on the fact that this asset class is highly unliquid and there is a huge amount of risk involved in investing in early stage companies. Usually half of these investments go belly up, leaving angel investors with a return averaging 27% over a portfolio. The valuation cap should be equal to what a company's current valuation would be if they were doing an equity deal. At the time of conversion, an investor can choose to convert at the 20% discount or the valuation cap. If we look at the previous example, say the company sets a $3 million cap on the note and they raise their next round at the same $5 million valuation set by the VC. In this case, everyone is happy. The investor increased their initial investment by around 60% and the entrepreneur has grown their company at an amazing rate. Without a valuation cap, the best possible return for an angel in a single year is 28%, which is the combination between the 20% discount and the 8% interest. As we discussed, this is half the return that an angel needs to make in order to be successful. Additionally, without a cap, an entrepreneur is incentivized to avoid a conversion trigger, thus lowering an investor's potential return. RVC sees this as a way to align both sides of the table. One of the biggest disadvantages of convertible debt is that it delays an angel's tax advantage status. Congress recently added section 1202 to the tax code, which allows investors to take up to a 100% capital gains tax exemption when making equity investments in early stage C corporations and holding the investment for five years or more. This capital gains tax exemption should cause more angels to prefer equity deals versus convertible debt.